I went by train, yes. Soon swapping the commuter masses at Liverpool Street Station for the sanctuary of the River Wensum, where I discovered the Cow Tower, a 14th century military structure at Cow Home, a meadow in Norwich, hence the name. But I did find the nearby Bishop's Bridge more photogenic. Make no mistake, a walk by the Wensum at this point is attractive and I went as far as Quayside. From here, instead of heading directly for the cathedral, I diverted into Elm Hill and Princess Street before arriving at St. Elphaberth's Gate for the cathedral. Enter the cathedral via the close, not the official way, but there is a good view from the Herb Garden itself worth a look. Entering the cathedral from the cloisters prepares us for the views inside, and should you feel hungry, treat yourself first to coffee and a magnificent sausage roll at the cafe, personally recommended. No picture, because I had eaten the sausage roll before thinking about it. Should have had seconds, or a doggy bag. The cathedral was begun in 1109. It was planned on a lavish scale, its tower and spire making a statement that can be seen from many locations in the city. It was the highest of its day, but now second highest after Salisbury. Norwich Cathedral lives to this day little change from its original plan. Time to take some photos inside the cathedral and whilst the quality of light is ideal for exterior shots showing every detail in its stonework, inside it is an entirely different proposition, mostly beset with problems related to contrast. I will show the camera settings, but that is not the whole story. However, you will notice that many of the shutter speeds are quite lengthy, even though all the shots are, yes, handheld. The OM5 has excellent camera stabilization, which I rely on for sharp images in low light and by keeping to 200 ISO for optimum quality. Handholding also gives me better access to those awkward church corners. Balancing exposure is the main problem. However, with increased technology in cameras and software, there is no excuse for an overexposed window in a dark interior. We do have HDR and AI, but when relied upon, I do wonder who or what has taken the picture. Better to select elements of the new technology and then add the craft of photography with a little bit of human involvement. Products like Adobe Lightroom have considerable scope for correcting over and under exposed elements of an image provided it is exposed correctly and then saved to RAW. I spot meter by selecting an area close to a bright window, helped by the electronic finder or histogram, if you prefer, but I don't use it. After a bit of practice, and this is not for instant gratification, by the way, but parts of the image will end up over and underexposed, but to a degree that can be corrected in post-production. Knowing how the image should look out of camera is the secret, and that only comes with experience. This method gives me considerable artistic control, but it requires, yes, practice. I didn't get it right the first time until I realized that the best judge were my eyes. There might be some noise, but I can accept that as better than an overexposed window, and is usually easier to correct. Windows are not the only feature that demand this half-technology, half-brain technique. The cherub is a more subtle example. Only part of him is sunlit, so I spot meter that part, allowing the rest of the image to be rendered underexposed. This was easily corrected in Lightroom using the sliders. 
I only took the OM5 and the 12 to 45 Pro lens to show what the out of the box kit can achieve. High up in the cathedral ceiling are some remarkable bosses for which a powerful telephoto is vital. Normally a tripod would be required, but if not permitted, as the camera and lens stabilizers may not be sufficient to guarantee a sharp image, increase the ISO for a faster shutter speed. Achieving shots without people requires patience, and I went back several times, and that is how I found out about the excellent sausage rolls in the Cathedral Café. I wasn't there early enough for morning shots, but lunchtime, when the café is full, can work as well as later in the day, just before the church closes. I did have time afterwards to saunter around the city again before returning on the train, the station building obviously benefiting from some recent and well-deserved restoration, now providing me with a grand exit, as well as a grand entrance earlier. <laughs> 